so hi everyone welcome to my studio um i'm here in england and i run the studio from uh a residential address uh in hertfordshire in england which is about 25 minutes odd from london and this is a bit of a, a raw video as you can see this is my um studio control area and what i'm going to do i'll run through um the space, um, what I use, how I use certain bits and why they're placed in certain places. Um, and hopefully it'll be something you can uh, enjoy and, uh, and see what I get up to in my studio. So as you can see, I've been sort of swiveling on my chair while saying that bit. Um, this is my usual control area where I kind of sit when I'm mixing recording um writing uh below me is a sort of self-made pull out um shelf if you like under the desk um and obviously there's the monitor in front of me as well which is really really nice um and uh nice and big i think it's a 27 inch screen which i run my pro tool sessions on um that essentially comes from the output from my MacBook, which is over here, um, and yeah, is the tape machine of the of the studio. Um, speaker wise, so I've got two Genelec uh, speakers. They're the ten thirty two Cs, and they've been completely calibrated for this room uh, using the Genelec software. And to be honest, I was skeptical at first using it. And then I used it, <laughs> as you should really. If you're skeptical of someone, get to know them, uh, is the saying. Um, and I did notice much of a difference. But in all honesty, I'm used to these speakers now. I've had them for a few years. And they've been played into nicely. And I really... I trust what I'm hearing. I enjoy what I'm hearing out of the speakers. Um, and my mix position is normally around here. And uh, I'm on a 24 mil lens, so it's not the widest, widest, but it really is a joy to listen to and have these speakers in my room. I used to have some smaller Yamaha ones, the HS5s, I believe they were, or HS7s. I sold those. And uh, I have got some HS8s at a different studio um, where I do voiceovers. And they're really nice as well, the Yamahas. But I only have the one, well, the two pairs. I might look at getting a couple of smaller speakers for the future just so I can alternate and have a listen to um, how things sound. But at the moment, I'm not in a, a rush to do that. Um, but yeah. So what else have we got? In front of me here is a, a little mixing desk. Um, and this mixing desk is a Soundcraft um, small compact desk. It has um, one, two, three, four, five, six um, preamps. But ultimately, as you can probably guess, I'm using this as a monitor control. Um, so I have Pro Tools coming into that and then that going to the speakers. I've got a CD player, um, which is over here in this little rack, just for listening to stuff um, as and when, which go to the speakers. I control my talkback through this. Um, I've got headphone mixes coming out of this as well. Um, and that makes things really handy and really accessible, if you know what I mean. So I can quickly grab it rather than go to the door and a mouse um, to make that happen. Um, so I think a lot of people prefer to do things that way, especially if you've got people recording with you and it's not just yourself um, to quickly get to what you need to. So that's really cool and I like that. It's just tucked away underneath the monitor there to an angle. This side, as you can maybe see, I've got a small screen and yes, that is basically a camera feed um, from a camera in another room um, in the property, which is basically a small live room 
where I have a drum kit and I'll show you that anyway but that's for me to see in there from here and as you can see I've got a, another camera here which has a nice wide lens um, which basically is the playback uh, for people to see me I'll give myself a little wave um, so they don't feel disconnected so if a drummer was recording and I'm obviously sat in here or whoever's mixing or engineering is sat in here they can feel or be part of the actual um, room if you like or be to more together rather than just hear each other keyboard wise in front of here I've got a Yamaha MX61 I believe um, I've had this for nearly 10 years actually and it's brilliant it's great for just knuckling down writing making a guide track that sort of thing it's got some really amazing samples especially the strings um, really love it and it sits in front of me because I can quickly write and play and um, without having to move away from the sweet spot of, of the speakers if you like so I get a nice sound when I'm recording um, below me um, is really just storage um, it's a bit dark down there but I've got a laptop bag I've got a box there uh, which has got some extra IEC cables or just bits and pieces I don't really need but I know they're there if, if I need them um, these funky little covers with the, the design they're actually just um, pieces of, of um, ply board which I've covered um, which cover um, the uh, sort of like filing cabinets behind it so all the the business side of things <laughs> it's hidden away and makes it look a bit nicer uh, rather than a filing cabinet so that's a new thing I've added recently um, and I think they look really nice actually just fit in nicely and I can just bring them out if I need to um, which is cool um, so over this side um, I've got a patch bay um, and it's really cool having this patch bay and <laughs> the reason why I say it's really cool I actually mean it's really easy um, makes things easy because it means I can get to the back of my racks and I've got three of them Remember, I've got one two three four so yeah sorry I've got four of them um, plus the desk um, plus instruments obviously and what it means with the patch bay if you are unfamiliar with them is that I can make any adjustment or any uh, routing possible so for example if I wanted to have the microphone go into one of the preamps anywhere in the studio then go into an EQ maybe a graphic EQ which is down here then into any compressor I wanted uh, it can happen and it can happen in a way which is seamless and not me having to sort of move equipment around or try my best to get behind these sort of racks and hope that nothing gets mucked about with um, and it leaves your equipment alone that way you don't have to unplug bits and pieces from them causing damage they can kind of sit in situ um, which is why I did it really there are certain patches within the patch bay especially these blue ones which are constantly always there um, they're more like the the ones signal that goes into the interface and out but essentially the way I have it routed uh, there is a diagram for it um, is that I've got my mic pre's here so I've got one two three four five six of them which are rooted into this XLR input. So essentially this is the back of the mic prees. And then below that are the ins and outs of the outboard, compression, everything I've got in the racks. So I can go in and out, into the interface, into Pro Tools up here, and haven't had to move any of the bits and pieces around. And honestly, if you're thinking about somehow piecing together a, a patch bay 
I would recommend it and uh, I haven't looked back since and honestly it's um, I've always used them when I've worked in other places theatres other studios and I completely understand why it's so useful uh, especially if you like to configure things differently now and again uh, it doesn't have to be all the time it just gives you that flexibility over here we've got some hard drives and most of this stuff is more backup stuff um, and I've got my SSD drives kind of dotted about um, from different projects um, which are really cool down below here I've got a, a small little lamp which was actually a friend made for me which is brilliant it gives a really clean um, yet distorted kind of grungy sound which is awesome which I get out occasionally for certain projects in here I've got some quick bits and pieces some cable testers and power mics mic sticks sorry um, drumsticks XLR cables all sorts um, I've got a cajon over here which I get out quite a bit for my own recordings especially if I don't want to get the drums out or it's just more you know needed for a project which is brilliant I've had this uh, guitar effects pedal um, and amp modeler. It's a, a Pod XT Live and I've had it for nearly 20 years actually and it's so good and so easy. So you've got lots of presets you can either model yourself or you can use their own presets and essentially you can create some really great guitar tones if you like in the box. Um, I used to use it when I gigged a lot um, on stage but uh, now it's become a bit of a workhorse in the studio which is great so behind me um, is this area and this area is really a bit of a performance area plus a hangout um, and it's quite a good size um, there is natural daylight behind that um, blind there the gray blind but I essentially keep things kind of like um, as you can see at the moment when people record um, the room is really dead it's fantastic to record in and that's why I like doing stuff in the recording space in here as well as obviously in the live room um, but let's have a little look so on this side as you see I've got some camera batteries charging bits some power um, in here I keep uh, chargers I've got some uh, camera accessories, uh, more hard drives, label maker, um, and uh, got an SM58 here, which is kind of handy um, when I want to record the cajon. I'll just stick that on the, uh, the behind part to get the low end. Uh, get some patch bay leads over here, which is really cool. So all the patch bay leads can live there if I need extra ones. Um, but before I dive into this side, actually, I should show you more that what's in the rack to give you an insight. So first of all, let's start over this side. Um, I've got the an effects unit on the top, which is a TC Electronic effects unit, um, which I've had for quite a while back in the days when everything was all analog, <laughs> and uh, which doesn't seem too long ago. Um, but once you're in the box, you kind of get used to it. <laughs> but I didn't want to lose this one because it's got some really great sounds, which occasionally I can jump to and bring into thanks to the patch bay. So I can insert it within Pro Tools um, as its own channel and use the reverbs, use the delays, that sort of thing. And it's really great. Um, so yeah, don't throw away your analog units. They really can be utilized as long as you have a patch bay and a way to get in to your to your computer below that as before i mentioned there's a tascam cdr record rewriter and recorder which really in the day was my before i've got a dat recorder as well but i used that to also bounce masters onto which worked really great um but of course cds are a little bit <laughs> old school now um so don't use that as much unless I'm just listening back to my favourite records on CD um, or old recordings which are still on CD, you know. Below that, uh, it's not switched on, but it's a Mackie um, 
multi-track and uh, it's a 24 digital um, audio recorder which has 24 tracks and honestly when I bought this my studio setup changed forever and I could suddenly record 24 tracks simultaneously bounce them into a door if I needed to quality is still amazing to this day and I've still got projects on it I don't use it as much these days in the studio to record it's more nostalgic for me and if I want to go back to certain recordings that are still on the hard drives but um, it's all hooked up I could plug it in at any point um, but it's more like I say um, there is a bit of a, a shelf filler shall we say to avoid me buying anything else because <laughs> once you've got empty space in your rack you know what it's like so you think oh maybe I should get something for it but no this this bad boy is going to stay and uh, I'm very happy with that uh, this red thing in case you were wondering is a cable tester for HDMI cables and RJ45 or network cables uh, which I use a lot uh, so it's just good before I do anything outside of the studio that I can run a test of the cables we're going to take out and uh, ensure they're all good upon arriving. Um, so yeah, so let's get over to this side. Over here is a base, uh, which is a Squire Precision base. And uh, I've had it a long time. I don't think I've ever changed the strings, if I'm honest. But it doesn't matter because the thing sounds great regardless. I like a nice um, clean base, but also... Um, quite a grungy one as well depending on the mix and what it needs but this is perfect really thin neck which is great if you're more of a guitarist like me so you can actually get your hand your um your hands around it to make it actually um play for you as opposed to just struggle to try and hit a note or run a scale and that's great i love it absolutely love it um down here you might see this little bad boy it's a um, eight-way stereo passive splitter and as you can kind of imagine it's used for stereo um, sort of headphone mixes to be split it has the one input so usually I would just use it for someone overdubbing acoustic guitars or a vocal in this room where they have to wear headphones because of the spill of the speakers and uh, works really nicely no power needed hence being passive um, over here, I've got a set of headphones. They're the Bear Dynamic DT150s, um, which are the ones I use in the studio. Um, I've got an NT1 original Rode microphone here, which is amazing. Always rigged up, as you can see. Great on anything, I find. Um, at the moment, we're recording quite a bit with a classical guitar player who comes along and um, I use that to pick up the, the guitar and it's really nice, really big and uh, sounds lovely. Um, my Yamaha Pacifica, <laughs> which is, uh, I laugh because I've had it forever and it was bought by a friend for me. Um, and honestly, it is my studio workhorse, which I plug into the, the XT pod quite a lot. Um, and yeah, I restring this quite a lot because I use it a lot and I prefer fresh strings on electric guitars. Just brings out a bit more character and clarity i find um but honestly this as much as i love looking at the yamaha pacificas because they've obviously come a long way since i can't see the need to replace this because it just does such a great job it stays in tune massive thing for guitars doesn't matter how lovely they are looking if they don't stay in tune they're a pain and for this price and it stayed in tune um fantastic really. Um, so yeah, one of the big centerpieces of the studio is definitely having the upright um, Yamaha piano, which is a 1970s U1A um, upright. Again, I always have it tuned and ready to use because they can go out of tune. It's not a digital piano, obviously, so keep it up to date and all the me um, mechanics working and, you know, by the, the tuner. Um, so I do that every six months. I've always got two microphones <laughs> kind of rigged up. At the moment, I've got two AKG C414s, uh, which go left and right. So just a close stereo microphone pattern. 
and it's a real privilege to have this in the studio to be honest i've wanted one forever there's something about recording the actual piano rather than the easy way with a digital piano um, which makes records stand out i find um, it's more unique more relaxing um, more of a, an accomplishment if you like <laughs> but um you know in all seriousness it's just it's just great to give your records personality with an upright or a real piano should I say, um, and having it always plugged in, ready to record makes life easier as well. And that's kind of my ethos in having a studio, is not to have to start start from scratch every time. Um, but of course, you know, it depends on the project. Over here, we've got um, my main acoustic, which I, I normally only have one. So forever I had a Washburn acoustic, which I loved. And then I got a Taylor acoustic I upgraded in around 2017. And my goodness, this thing is just so lovely. Um, recording wise, playing wise, it's a 216 CE model. Um, I got it on Denmark Street in London after a, a theatre trip. And my God, it is just one of the best investments I've ever made as a musician, but also as a... Uh, as a recording engineer uh, for the studio, and it's awesome. This uh, white thing you can see here is like a big frame. It's actually an acoustic panel I just put together with a frame and some insulation, which can kind of hook over the window. And I do that really just to make it even deader if I have to. And uh, I'm in a quiet area, but it's still uh, nice to have sometimes just to make people feel more cozy in a studio feeling. Um, over here I've got some acoustic panels, behind that there's a heater, I've got some artwork up here which is really nice. Um, this is the South Bank in London, if you know London. You can see Big Ben in the background and I used to busk quite a lot where that lamppost is. So when I saw this print in the art shop I really wanted it because it just reminded me of doing that and uh, it's really cool. Um, this little piano here on top of the piano <laughs> I've had forever. I, th I think I got it from a school fate when I was a kid and uh, it's always stayed with me. So that's something I will keep forever or try to. Yeah, we might be able to play the piano, but sometimes there's a chord out there <laughs> which you don't know. And it's quite handy to have that reference right in front of you. Um, keep guitar plectrums and stuff in this little case. It looks like a camera. Um, and the New York City skyline bit of artwork just to give a bit of colour and I love New York City um, which is cool and I've got a acoustic panel which is kind of just like deadening that bit of plasterboard on the left behind it to give it more of a absorption from piano um, sort of playing so yeah and then back over this way you can see the control bit which is uh, really where I would normally spend most of my time <laughs> if I'm not recording myself or um, needed to tweak anything in the other room. And yeah, so that gives you an insight. I've got acoustic panels above me. I've got like a cloud here, which is kind of like hooks, just hanging. And honestly, it makes such a difference. It just makes it feel tighter. Um, so I recommend if you have a particular room that has some reflections, just experiment with that sort of thing. If anything, they'd look nice as well, but obviously that shouldn't just be the case. You should be putting these things up for a reason. Um, and uh, I've got some panels this side as well, just to eliminate the uh, reflection. And that side as well, just behind the speakers. So all that stuff going from behind the speakers is being absorbed into the into the wall as opposed to bouncing back. So yeah, so that's the uh, sort of control room with mini live room area. Um, obviously a Persian rug. This is a copy rug, but it's very nice to have. Again, it protects your floor, but it also deadens the room a bit more and gives a nice vibe when you're um, setting up a session or if people come over to record. Um, so yeah. In these racks, 
Um, because I haven't gone through these ones either, have I? Let's have a look. So first of all, we'll start from the bottom, shall we? Because it's just easier at the moment. I've got the SSL Fusion. And I use that really on either um, a master bus, a mixing, um, sorry, a group bus, i.e. drums, mostly, um, or on a mastering chain. And honestly, I've made a video about this particular unit and I've run some audio through it and given some examples, but it's a bit of a love-hate thing. Sometimes I just think, what's the point? But then you use it on a certain project and you realise, okay, it was expensive, but it's definitely doing its job for someone who cares about the audio. Um, so try it if you're not sure about it. Give it a go um, and go from there. Above that is a compressor, which is um, a Tegula audio um, cream, which is amazing. I I don't think there's anything I don't put through this thing <laughs> when it comes pre-mix um, edit. So literally I could just turn a multiple group of acoustic guitars, um, say 12 tracks of acoustics and put it into a stereo just by going through this before I go into mix. It's got a Poltec style EQ at the top and it's got obviously the compression settings below. Um, but no, it, it sits beautifully and I absolutely love it. Um, recommend it completely um, again everyone's got a different taste if you like <laughs> for these things so just you know if it works for you then try it first and see what you think um, the this valve compressor is a TL audio ivory 2 which is a two channel valve compressor which I've had um, I've got two of them this is the one I bought recently I say recently in the last four years and it just doesn't have to do much. It just, audio has to go through it. You switch these things on and you suddenly have a different feeling of audio altogether in your mix. And I, I just very subtly compress things through this. And again, that might be paralleled with the cream um, or a plugin, dependent on what we're doing. Um, and it's great, absolutely love it. Um, Above that is a Mic Pre, which is the Neve 1073 DPX. So it's a newer Neve one, looking like a bit of an older one. I got this um, because I wanted to literally up my game with Mic Pre's, like most of us do. And I don't regret it. I wish it was less expensive, <laughs> but, but these things obviously do cost money. But then I thought, you know what? I'm going to probably use this for the rest of my life. <laughs> so the investment for me was about the enjoyment and uh, the fact it had EQ on each channel as well um, was a bonus and most of the time I'm recording unless it's drums single or double tracks at a time so it just seemed to make sense for me um, I'm not saying I recommend it go and buy one I'm, what I'm saying is it, it works for me and it's just awesome um, could I live without it? Yes. Could I, would I miss it? Yes. <laughs> you know, it's one of those. Um, but if you have a budget or you just want to sort of get something which is going to be your life piece, if you like, um, as an engineer in your own rack, then I recommend it and just have fun with it, really. Um, you can drive the thing to hell and it just sounds amazing uh, on vocals and anything, really. But at the moment, I usually just put the piano straight through regardless um, and so yeah above that is the AD converter so from more analog to digital which is a focus right scarlet um, I've tried the expensive expensive ones I've tried the cheap cheap ones I've tried the medium ones which I look at this one as I don't hear any difference um, when it comes to single or double or eight tracks being recorded. Over this side, um, I've got some nice pieces as well, which I really like. Um, first of all, I've got the Universal Audio 6176 unit, which is this uh, larger 2U um, uh, piece of equipment. And it's got a preamplifier, which is the 610B, 
tube preamp and it's also got the 1176 um, limiting amplifier on the right. Um, you can use them together, i.e. linked, or as separate devices. And honestly, it's a bit indulgent for the studio, but it's just fantastic. And one of those investments I made because I wanted to use it for my main vocal preamp for the studio, um, linked with the 1176, um, which is awesome. And um, above that, I've got a DBX286S uh, mic pre, um, well, it's a mic, mic preamp, but it's really a vocal processing unit, really, because it's got a mic preamp, it's got the compressor, it's got a de enhancer, gate, expander. The all-in-one deal, uh, have three of these, but one in this studio. Um, and they're brilliant for spoken word, I find, in particular, because of the all-in-one side of things. Um, and, uh, yeah. For the price, it's a fraction of the cost, but excellent. Um, and uh, yeah, really fantastic compared to the, the, the UA uh, one. This uh, DBX compressor is a 266XL compressor and I use it to just smash the hell out of things. So if I wanted to just compress a drum, part, a parallel compression with a drum bus, for example, or a bass or a vocal, whatever, I can just compress the hell out of it, <laughs> blend that in, and it just sounds great with an analog feel. Um, and yeah, I've got, I've got some good memories of this particular piece of kit as well with other records I've done. So I, I wanted to keep hold of it when I was redoing the studio a few years back. Um, so yeah, it lives there. Below that is a, a graphic EQ, which obviously was from <laughs> a few... Uh, decades ago now it feels, but uh, I've had it for quite a while and it was initially on a live rig, but now I use it just if I want to just be experimental, just make things sound different or just use a, an analog piece of EQ as opposed to the many plugins. Um, and uh, it's fantastic. It just, you know, it just, I think of it as a bit like, you know, you want to have something different to eat on a Tuesday than you do maybe on the Monday. <laughs> so I kind of just like, you know, like to change the flavours and the way I work on certain projects. Um, because otherwise it gets a bit stale and a bit, bit samey and it will sound the same as well. So it's good to have a little play and experiment when you can. Uh, and I've, yeah, over here, just near the little monitor mixing desk, I don't know if you can see if it's focused, but it's a little microphone and that's an old camera microphone which I use as my talkback. It's very ambient but when I want to uh, speak to anyone um, on headphones I can just bring up the talkback fader and that goes to the headphones and it's very easy and everyone can hear what's going on. Got a few little trinkets here you know obviously I've got my uh, Back to the Future car, got the Marshall cab over here which is a nice little speaker you can actually plug a guitar into that it sounds really fuzzy and fun um good to warm up with <laughs> so there you go uh, oh and this is a new addition just recently actually hence why it's kind of hidden away it's a roland tr6s uh it's a bit of a drum machine basically but they call it a rhythm performer but it's it's a bit more than a drum machine because of that um i'm getting my head around it slowly um i really wanted it to program some some drums and just have things on the go to bring in elements, even if it's a rock band or just uh, something more standard, uh, just to bring in some electronic bits um, and stay a bit more up to date with that side of things. So I kind of invested in this recently, which I hopefully will, I'm spending at least an hour a day just trying to figure out how to use it. <laughs> I'm not really a manual person or instructions person, so I kind of just like to play and I'll be lying if I uh, said I haven't looked at any YouTube videos on how to use the thing yet. But <laughs> but hey, it's the best uh, way to get tutorials sometimes, isn't it? But okay, let's um, head into the other side of the studio, which is the live room, and we'll catch up in there. Okay, so this is my um, live space and it's basically a separate room um, away from the detached converted garage studio. And it's uh, 
got quite high ceilings, which is really handy, it's just for sound and making it sound a bit different. Yet, with the acoustic panels on the wall, uh, it keeps it all rather dead. And I put some of these there myself. Um, but over here I've got a little control system, if you like. So everything that patches in the main control room comes via here. So I've got um, the XLR inputs here. So at the moment I've got some drum inputs going out into the control room. There's a little mixer up here, which I haven't actually got plugged in, but it's just sat there at the moment. So don't be fooled by it being there. Above that, I've got a yeah Bluetooth speaker, which is just obviously to play back music and relax. Um, I've got a small little mixer here, which again feeds from the headphone mix I send from the other side in the control room. And then that can then go out to the people in here and split however they want. Usually I'd have up to two mixes, but I can have up to five mixes in here, which can be split from this particular desk, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, um, over here I've got the camera, which in a way films what's going on in this room. And there's a chill out chair here, which is really comfortable. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't comfortable. I've actually really chilled in here and just listen to music and it's just awesome. Um, and people can sing sit, sitting down sometimes or they could stand up. And essentially what they have is this here, the screen, which will then, which you can see, which is a live feed from the camera in the live room so we can all see each other. So if I sit down over here, you can get an idea of the drum kit and it is always permanently put in. I've got two short SM81s doing as acting as overheads at the moment there. I've got a Electrovox RE20 doing the kick drum. Let's see if that focuses up. But you can see that's just going into the into the small kick drum I've got here, which has got some beef, I tell you, for a small kick drum. Chose that really for footprint, but I realized I just didn't need to have a massive kick drum so it's definitely got some weight to it um i've got an akg microphone here with the ck 61s capsule on a hi-hat got the sm57 on the snare which is a gretsch snare um a bayer um dynamic m201 on the snare as well as a the variation it's not plugged in but i've got it always hooked up i like it more on theater stuff or more musical theater stuff but the sm57 on more rocky and pop stuff got a crash ride this side and uh just the hi-hat i usually when it comes to recording drums for me it's about capturing the performance with the snare kick and hi-hat um, more than cymbals cymbals i actually like to overdub um, because you can just create that isolation um, that way and less going in, less information going into microphones that don't need it, basically. So your your snare drum is really going to be more about the snare mic, sorry, it's going to be more about the snare uh, as opposed to trying to eliminate bleed and what have you. Um, and yeah, but it's just the way I kind of work, but obviously everyone's different, um, which is cool. Up here I've got... Obviously, it's a Jimi Hendrix book, which is I always find it quite inspirational when playing to look at artists I like. Um, I've got I'm a big fan of Oasis, so I've got the What's the Story Morning Glory What's the Story Morning Glory vinyl up there. Um, got a little car there. I think my son left that in there for me, which is nice. Um, and some tools. Sometimes I've got to just take off, um, you know, screws and what have you on mic clips and what have you, so it's good to have that nearby. Um, this side again, I've got some books, I've got some spare cable, tambourine, the John Lennon record, which is really cool, uh, the Imagine record. Uh, music stand this side, which holds the drumsticks, and uh, sometimes I can put an iPad there, whatever, lyric sheets, you name it, charts, it's just handy. This little wedge here, is a it's like a little busking amp I, I used to use a lot but i've kind of placed it there now it's a roland busking amp um 
It's got a couple of channels in it, which is great, but I use it as a speaker for talkback, really. So if I if a musician didn't want to wear headphones for any reason, because they just didn't, <laughs> um, or they just weren't working, I could quickly say, right, stop, we're not recording, or whatever, you know. Um, and that's quite handy to have, or just put a bit of playback in there. Um, yeah, so this is uh, <laughs> another acoustic panel, which was homemade. And what I do with this one, if I just move the chair there, I it's got wheels, so I can move it round and place it. Sometimes this, to me, the dead spot is behind the drummer. So at least that way it can eliminate some reflection. Um, and I just do that by default really now. Um, so the drummer would perform here if it's me or whoever. And uh, just place that there and obviously move it out of the way after to create some more space. Um, but being on wheels helps a lot. I've got some. I've got this drum mat here, um, which is great, and I've got two original Persian rugs here and here, which just give the place a vibe. Really, um, this panel here, acoustic panel, I put together and got the the uh, the cover from a a local company which does all the different um, pieces of material. And the same as over here as well. And this yellow door is just literally going into a loo. Um, so the facility is still away from my house, um, which is really cool. But the great thing about this room, for me, first of all, is a vibe. Um, second of all, it is isolated from any machine noise, outside noise, and it's just awesome because of that. Um, you can just quite simply know that oh, I'm writing today or someone wants to overdub some drums onto a record they've done at home. They can come in. I know it's all kind of set um, for a decent sound. Um, writing, reflecting is really cool in here. So as I say, you can chill out here, you know, and just uh, start thinking about your next record or the bass player could be sat here with headphones whilst the drummer's recording the drums live and the bass is being DI'd. Um, so it just gives it its flexibility, really. Um, and these acoustic panels just completely change the room. It's got quite a live feel, um, but it's still, thanks, thanks to these guys, they're kind of like, um, make the room a lot more pleasing to listen to anyway. But no, this, this having this extra space, the camera feeds to go with, so we still feel connected to the control room, is a, a real blessing and a, one that really makes the recording process a lot more interesting and fun, and but also gives the results you want as well. Real isolation and um, some uh, some great records because of it. So yeah. That's that. I think at this point, I will say thanks very much for watching everyone. And I hope this video has been useful. <laughs> it's literally been me chatting away and uh, walking around with the camera, trying to stay as in focus as possible. So I do hope uh, you've enjoyed it. And if you have any comments or questions, by all means, give us a shout. and. Uh, yeah, but happy recording to you. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Bye.